No time for introductions today. We have plenty to talk about. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. I've had a little bit of a later wake up this morning, waking up at about 7 a.m., which is far outside of my usual wake up at, at about 5 to 5.30 a.m. But with that said, I would like to wish you the best of the best and the happiest, happiest in a more sincere tone because, well, why the hell not, man? It's easy to do. And it, can only, and it can only work for the better, I do think. At least that's my hope. And I've yet to be uh, I've yet to be con or convinced the other way. Anyways, with that said, into the Crown Chain application we go, which can be found at app.crown.com. Net. It is by by the way 100% free, so take advantage of it, or well, or don't. But <laughs> fair enough. Anyways, see plenty of things going on right now as Bitcoin does back uh, back off the top side of the range and pretty much all of the uh, all of the mark here. We do see that Bitcoin dominance is shooting up right now, which is rather interesting as uh, as we haven't really seen like a major breakout just yet. Yet the Bitcoin dominance is going up, so that is definitely going to be something to check in on the charts today, specifically the Bitcoin dominance chart, I should say. As uh, typically, I leave it for just the weekends, but I do think that this is rather interesting to go in and uh, check out the minutia. On top of that, we do say that the fear and greed index has come down two points, so we're still extremely fucking greedy, <laughs> or I would actually just read this as extremely optimistic here is uh, perhaps a better way of relating these uh, these concepts. Optimism, pessimism rather than fear and greed. Uh, that could probably use a renaming uh, effect as well. Also, open interest uh, pretty much holding steady as well throughout the last uh, half week to a week, just below that $8 billion marker. So we haven't really seen open interest kind of change while Bitcoin price action just essentially trudges through this region. So what does that lead me to believe? It leads me to believe alongside price action, of course. Well, we'll get into it soon enough, but uh, but but we'll, we'll let's actually just save it for the actual fucking charts. How about that? Mark data. Okay, over here, I do I did load up um, a burner account on uh, for for this computer so that we we can actually show some shit over here too. Um, alerts. I actually do have an alert in for the eight billion dollar market, just because I do want to keep it, keep an eye on that, and then I'll actually put another one a little bit later for the interest rates as well. Anyway, speaking of, before we get into that, open interest right here, we do see it come down a little bit from yesterday to today, alongside price action, but ultimately we don't really see as destruction of uh, of trend action here at all just yet. So I do still look at this as within the context of the current um, of the current price structure. So nothing too diabolical. Yet, that is, yet. I also do see that the global funding rate has actually come down below the threshold after remaining above there for about a day and a half to two days, we saw over the weekend. And that's kind of what we were, or what I was concerned about over the weekend, essentially, that the weekend time was probably going to be a bit of a pullback there uh, to play off that, uh, that, that exorbitant interest rate as people kind of, you know, get out of their positions and don't want to eat up those fees, <laughs> which were getting pretty damn high, especially on FTX, which we should go check in right now. And holy fucking moly, man, now buy bits the odd man out i don't know if this is a bad feed or not because this is just this is just like a middle finger in the middle of the funding rates right here but we do see bybit all the way at uh, 0.331 everyone else is way below uh way 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 below and certainly below the threshold right here as this is your 0.1 percent region so this is kind of what we were speaking about over the weekend looking for essentially a quick spike up which is probably going to produce a little bit of a short-term medium-term pullback in bitcoin price action and then for that to kind of come back into parity and that's kind of what we've seen thus far leading up for the next week of price action which we're going to talk about biases in just a second here i want to check out all of our other metrics here and just see okay so we actually do have a bitcoin dominance chart right here you can see that we do have a little bit of a reversal in progress right now but however it, it or sorry it is very much unconfirmed on the macro i can just see a short-term one which we'll actually have to go into the charts themselves to really get some more some more uh the, the pertinent information anyways uh what else do we see okay uh, everything else looks more or less, yeah, not really screaming any, any major difficulties in front of my face here. So I think this would be a good time to go into the actual charts uh, themselves. And let's start it off with our long-term charts right here. The secondary charts, as I refer to them too, which are quickly becoming my primary charts because Bitcoin and 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 all have been trending for quite some time now. And what do you know? Bitcoin did close above the top side trolling band on the weekly. So that does set into the bias leaves for myself. Looking for this next week of price action to very likely produce new all-time highs. In fact, have we already you got that right now no we have not um bitcoin immediately sells off as soon as the new weekly did start but overall this is very very good obviously following through with what we saw on cmes as well so again a bit of formality there but it is good to see it confirmed on both as uh, spot price action is typically what people are trading and in this case right here yes that does set in the bias that i would be looking for new all-time highs very likely coming in this next week or two of price action and if we look at our momentum monsters as it is right now we see that macd histogram continues to increase on the new tick very very good will continue to rise as long as bitcoin's above thirty nine thousand two. Uh, 300 so that's very good as well adx remains strong the dmi plus has not gotten a positive slope though on the new tick it's not a death sense in and of itself it's not a death sense at all in fact it's not really anything major i would just have liked to have seen it get a positive uh, or sorry not a positive but 
well, I guess technically a positive slope and upward slope there in order for me to get like more immediately bullish. But that does still set into the bias that uh, that up and onwards is the way <laughs> to quote the Mandalorian right there, of which I've only seen a few episodes. And that's really awful because I'm actually I'm actually a huge Star Wars fan. Um, anyways, uh, so looking at this right here, all is well and good. I want to see what the new tick on CME looks like as well. Very, 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 very similar here, increasing on the histogram as well. So I do like that. And again, trending above the top side trolling band. So I look at all all i fucking hate this word but dips uh let's just let's just call it price action movements below as uh, as very likely opportunities now we do have a quite a big range here so i wouldn't necessarily say that just because bitcoin came down to like forty-six thousand bucks that that is the opportunity right there do you think that it can come a little bit lower which we'll uh dissect when we go to lower term time frames uh, a little bit later but for right now uh long term or higher term time frames all still looking good to me three day over here for cmes i think it's closing today no oh wow no not even fucking close uh the 18th jesus christ what about the two days is that was that one is that the one closing today no not even that one as well jesus man uh way the fuck off let's see it must be on spot price action do we have anything closing today yeah it must be it, it must be the two day yes um if the two day does close below the top side trolling band today i would say that that would be a damn good indication that we will come back down and test wherever the nine expansion average does end up tomorrow i would imagine that that's probably going to be around the forty-four thousand dollar base so we do have quite the range here between about 48 and a half i believe is or maybe it's just 48 even uh we'll uh well well actually once we get on the primary charts we'll go we'll go through on that i think it's just about forty-eight thousand bucks if memory serves me correctly and then to the downside about forty four thousand dollars so it is a four thousand dollar range to be fair and uh technically speaking thus far we've seen a move all the way down to 45 726. so with that in mind i probably would be looking for a little bit more of a try to the downside on the short-term time frames but ultimately my main message would be i would be looking at that as an opportunity uh so are we closing the two day here yes we are closing the two Day here yes that is, okay that is right i want to see the next tick on the two day as well if the dmi plus gets a positive slope that would be damn good indication as well that bitcoin likely does uh reaccumulate off the bottom side of the short term range anywhere anywhere around uh, 44 to forty five thousand dollars, and then does give another try to the upside uh after that three day i believed closed last night so it's certainly not closing today yeah it's definitely not closing today um but i did we close above the top side toronto band here uh it looks like no uh, very fucking close, extremely, extremely close, about 300 bucks, which in this market is, 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 is like a sneeze. So I don't put too much weight on that. Uh, but again, kind of same, same sort of thing here as well. I would be looking for this one to kind of fill out the bottom side of the short term range. Uh, but still with the long term bias that this is, uh, more or less, well, more or less upside angled. And then of course the daily here too, daily coming down to the nine expansion rate average. So finally we do actually do have some, a little bit actionable and I would be looking for the next tick on the DMI ADX for the daily to kind of give a lot of insight as well so we have both we, we have a couple higher term time frames closing today what I like to see if Bitcoin is going to pick it up, uh, let's say earlier within this week rather than later within this week, I want to see this get a positive slope alongside the two day. If that happens, yes, very, 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 very good indication that we will come back up and uh, very likely meet or sorry, very likely head towards that fifty one and a half thousand dollar target of which that is just the next medium term time frame target right here. Or I guess I'm on the wrong chart. There we go. So that's just the me that's just the next medium term time frame target right here at the two spot extension. Also pattern uh, target from the or sorry. Well, I guess it was a career accumulation phase between 38,000 and 32,000 uh, bucks and that would be about 51,500 um, right around this region right here but ultimately not really a big uh, not really like a big basin area other than that probably does produce a short-term medium-term uh, time frame pullback but ultimately I, I would be looking for a move towards a 2618 still um, based off the weekly closure based off the structure based off the trend based off momentum oscillators anywhere between there and about the three spot extension and about a four thousand dollar range between 58,000 and 62,000 is kind of where I'm looking towards uh, before the next sort of potential medium, maybe even higher term time frame pullback region. Um, so with that in mind, I do think it would be relevant now to go to the lower term time frames and start to get into the minutia here, of which we can see that the uh, daily coming down to, the, to test the 10 simple after playing out a little bit of bearish divergence right here. I'd say that this is not the one that I'd really be looking for. Overall, this is a very strong read on your RSI, which may, which means we believe that this that that this short term move right here very likely does not get like full on follow through. Uh, at most, I'd be looking for it to come down like on a wick to about forty two five hundred or forty two thousand dollar base, uh, but not actually break down below there. On top of that, we do see that uh, momentum does remain to the upside on the Stoke uh, momentum index here, as long as Bitcoin is above forty two thousand two hundred ish region or a little bit above there. So that is. Kind 
kind of coming in line with that area as well. Does mean that they can come back down and test it. However, as long as it closes above, momentum remains to, the, remains to the north side here. And I don't really have any major issues with that, to be honest with you. Anyways, going down to the very low term timeframes right here, what do we see? So here's where I actually want to spend a little bit more time because I think this is a little bit more obvious right now. And we do still see that the bottom side of the short term time frame range, and you could also look at this as a medium term time frame range as well, because we are dealing with bigger numbers here at about 44,300 on a four hour closure. If you're using a two hour, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but I do think that you can use it in faster markets. It's just, it's not going to be as, uh, as solid as a four hour, for example, uh, that same number would be, let's just call it 44,000. Even I think it's a little bit easier to remember that way. Anyways, as it stands right now for the four hour, we can see that the bottom side of the range still yet to be tested here, but that is very much in line with what we saw on the daily and the two day, I believe it was, uh, on the other charts that we were just looking at. So if Bitcoin does come back down around and test there, I actually would be looking at this as an opportunity and very likely just another higher low in a series of higher lows as Bitcoin does uh, trudge onwards and forwards here. Now, of course, yesterday I was wrong about this as Bitcoin did put in a bit of a ascending triangle at the top side of the range um, on Sunday it was, and technically speaking did break above the top side of the range, but your key critical ingredient for why this was not gonna work out as an actual breakout was a volume signature right here. We didn't see any sort of breakout volume on top of that. So in that case, that was, well, that was, that was destined to fail. No, I wouldn't say that was destined to fail, but over a weekend seeing something like that above your weekly range without any sort of uh, supported open interest or volume on top of that as they pretty much say the same as you can see throughout this consolidation doesn't really give us much uh, much to be working with and that was a bit of a warning signal for that now that doesn't mean that i would be um uh well looking for that to continue on into the week it was the higher term time frames closures that was the big focus yesterday on sunday and that is still very much viable and that still is the bias at least for myself of course it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor but that would that would imply that you know i'm essentially looking at this as an opportunity uh, if I were to be trading these ranges right here. But the last trade that I made was, I don't know, below like 35 or 30, somewhere between 35 and 34,000. I haven't even checked on it. Like, just like, <laughs> I'm like completely trade up, uh, changed up my trading style. I'm like <laughs> just taking like these medium and long term time frame trades based off of moving averages for the most part. And, um, and uh and just throwing away the key after that it's kind of nice actually nice to change it up a bit um anyways as it stands right now yes still if forty-four thousand three hundred does break here then i would switch on to short-term medium-term bearish uh looking for another four thousand uh maybe even plus dollar move to the downside at the very least to about 44 or sorry forty thousand dollar base um with likely a bounce implied there then i want to see it in real time before you know making the next judgment on top of that but for right now um i don't look at this as problematic at all whatsoever i look at it as problematic below this right here that's where things actually do change so it doesn't mean that it can't do that it just means that that's where it actually changes for myself of course you know use this information however you might see fit for yourself uh but ultimately you know this move back down below the weekly trollinger band i am ultimately looking at as a more long-term opportunity uh, if i were to be trading these ranges right now anyways momentum all sorts as we do see uh oh actually we do have something a little bit problematic here we do actually have a jewel sell signal on the four hour now let's see what it looks like on cmes if it's not the same on cme it does not matter to me and it actually is very similar on CME. That's uh, that's actually a little bit concerning. That's actually a little bit concerning. Um, so how would this be an actionable signal uh, within the current context of the range? Well, on CME, I think it's a little bit more obvious here. And we do see that we have a low side right there. That'd be your 44,300 on spot price action. On CME, it's about 45,000 bucks. And the top side of the range is obviously this area right here. So with that in mind, if Bitcoin does start to actually take out this low right here by closing, or sorry, uh, well, what, what, what time frames could we use? We, uh, we're on a four hour right now. What about a two hour? Yeah, two hours uh, about the same as well. Uh, below this region, making new lows then yes, I would look at that as actionable and targets uh, very likely down to $40,000 will be initiated. Um, very likely a bounce implied at $40,000, but that is a pretty fucking big move at that point. I mean, that is from top to bottom, you know, what, $4,000, $5,000 move, depending upon where you kind of get in. That is very much tradable. And we do actually see quite a few things going on there right now. So short term, would it be a bit more downside angled? Perhaps, yes, it looks like Bitcoin will try to put in a bit of a wick down here, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily look for that ma next major downside move as long as this area does hold to be fair now on the other side you could definitely argue hey crown we're in a we're in a range of about four thousand dollars that is a big move nonetheless it's like yes it is but within the context of a, a price action that's above forty thousand dollars it's not as big of a deal as when bitcoin was like at ten thousand dollars for example you know where that's like a 40 percent move it's, it's completely different uh, ideology here when bitcoin's trading about four to five x higher than that number um so looking at this right now what do we see on four hour momentum also we do see that four hour rsi do you 
give us a little bit of bearish divergence right here. Fair enough. I do think that the easy portion of that move is already played out. Um, next portion, it would be that move actually down uh, another about almost 2,000 bucks to 45,000 bucks. This is on CMEs, by the way. So the same area on spot price action would be about 44.3. Uh, I'm curious if the lower term time frames agree with this. Yes, they do. And sorry, I should also denote that uh, Stoke Momentum Index coming down as well as long as below 45, uh, 48.500-ish region. What is spot price action showing? actually even higher than that almost 40 uh oh yeah yeah about forty nine thousand bucks right there uh very interesting now we do have this trend line on the uh histogram here which i do think is relevant because if you are going to look for for this one to get picked up then you'd be looking for it to get picked up likely on the next uh maybe not on the next tick but on the next two ticks on the next two ticks is where that is where that starts to come into fruition um four hour rsi on spot is very similar to what we see on cmes yeah very very similar there very very similar it does not have the same sort of uh, bearish divergence present although Although that would be bearish divergence, so yeah, one, two, three stabs. Um, the question now in my mind is, does this turn into a higher low or not? If it, if it does not turn into a higher low, then yeah, I actually would be looking for that move down to about $40,000. But again, based off the weekly, I would be looking for at that as a major opportunity, at the very least for a scalp bounce play, uh, to put it bluntly. Um, I, I, I don't like to use more direct terminology uh, usually, but... That would be it um, in that case. Anyways, uh, three hour, yep, same, seeing the same thing right here, actually building above it, which is not necessarily the best for uh, for those short-term timeframes at uh, 49,500 ish region. We do see that this is coming in on increasing volatility here. I haven't seen the uh, the moving average get get, uh, get a positive slope on this one just yet, but it is, uh, but it certainly is expanding right now. And if that does retain for like the next half day to a day, that will very that that will turn back onto the upside. What do we see on three hour RSI right here? Here. Yeah, the same bearish divergence present. Um, but ultimately, I, again, I have no long term issue with this. So that does me leave me believe that any sort of downside moves within this range are big opportunities, or I shouldn't say big opportunities, but they are opportunities nonetheless. Um, of course, two hour doing the same thing, expanding from extremely low read. I, I think we even had like a zero read yesterday by our Lee Stokes. Uh, uh, again, coming down as long as below 50,235. So all of these are falling through with each other. And by hourly RSI, same thing here as well, just a little more aggressive. Now, is the hourly already switching around or not? Yeah, hourly does suggest that we do uh, very likely test back down to the 200 simple and 200 exponential average, which actually are completely synonymous with each other. And that is right around $45,000 base. So I'd be looking for a move down there very, 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 very likely, but also a bounce imply there as well, uh, to be fair. So with all of that in mind, we do see uh, several things in the lower term timeframes that do suggest a little bit of further continuation to the downside, but I wouldn't necessarily call that a breakdown outside of the range to the downside, which are two completely different things. And again, I do favor the higher term timeframes here. So with all of that in mind, well, let's actually get this right for the hourly right there. Uh, with all this in mind, you know, if I did have call things right now, I'd probably be looking for a short term move to the downside, but that ultimately does get buoyed back up and, uh, and I'd still be going with the former trend in tech proven otherwise again doesn't mean that the other that the other situation cannot happen it just means that that changes tangibly below this area right here and that's what I go off of as a trader anyways uh, into the medium term time frames we go let's see what the 12 hour says right now coming down to test the 10 simple as it is I mean typically it's gonna be a little bit of a bounce play right there uh, same thing on spot price action uh, as well here playing out that same sort of uh, regular bearish divergence one two three drives on the line extremely likely that it does come down and test around the uh, the 21 here which would be just around forty five thousand dollars so yes i do think that bitcoin has a little bit of short-term downside but i would be looking for bounce around this region right here and then we'll come back to it after that should be denoted however that 12 hour is going to be a little bit problematic right here if we do see the stoke momentum index actually cross the downside it's not a death sentence as i don't look at um, uh, counter signals to the trend as very actionable. They're more or less like take profit signals. If you actually took the the uh, well, the bullish signal like way the fuck over here when it crosses zero line and also got the bullish cross. That was February second. That was when Bitcoin was thirty four thousand dollars. That's why I like this indicator <laughs> in trending markets. It gets a move like this, right? Like that's quite that's quite powerful. Um, but uh, but you know but but the counter trend moves they are more or less like exit signals rather than um, rather than like get on the other side of the trade signals until the actual trend reverts itself. Okay, moving on to the daily uh, coming down to the ten simple. Yep, same shit, same shit. Um, what about two day? Do we see anything of particular interest right here? Still angled to the north side. 
two day RSI is still more or less healthy. I actually still really, really like this one. I'd say that the hidden bullish Everton signal was certainly played out. I mean, that was a more than $10,000 move, which is fucking insane. Uh, three days, same thing as well. Very, 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 very similar here. And do we have anything new to talk about on the weekly? Weekly Stoke momentum index actually still pointed northwards as long as about $42,000. Kind of does lead me to believe that uh, $42,000 is a critical region. Uh, weekly RSI, um, no, I don't see anything of particular note right here. Yes, it is aggressive. Yes, it is way the fuck up there. But um, actually, let's go to a more long-term chart right here. And actually, uh, come to think of it, we actually do have one of the highest reads on, uh, we actually do have one of the highest reads on weekly RSI for the, oh, wow, in the history of Bitcoin, actually. Uh, only two times in the history has it even been higher than this. But um, But have those been perfect highs in the past? Let's see. I actually want to see this one. Uh, this one was right before the week of the actual RTOM hive right there. And then this one was, yeah, same thing. And then this one over here, yep, same thing as well on the $20,000 tick. So fair enough, actually, that is a little bit a uh, little bit concerning right there. But I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin does have another move to the upside, puts some sudden divergence on the weekly, then plays out a more long-term time frame pullback. Uh, and we see like a, you know, a Fifteen thousand dollar rangers or something like that. That's kind of that's kind of what that would imply. Um, still looking at this as increasing historical volatility percentile, while the trend is very much in breakout mode on the weekly. That specifically that is. So again, you know, all higher term time frames in the way that I look at them are bullish here. The question is, uh, how are the lower term time frames going to going to fit into that narrative? And again, you know, kind of wrapping things up. Short term time frames very likely a little bit of a pullback. Uh, higher term time frames bullish, so that likely does get picked back up and march onwards and forwards to the upside. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so we went over all of that. Let's go see what Mr. Buterall is doing today as well, as that one should be good insight, uh, as that one has been more or less leading the market for a while now. A little bit of bearish divergence on that, getting that move down to the 21 exponential moving average right there. However, this is starting to be a little bit more, uh, a, a little more potentially problematic. Now, I would say that you can make a very similar read to what we see on Bitcoin as well, and that would be with the short-term time frame range right around that last low right here, this last obvious one right there. As you can see um, now that's way the fuck down there so is that is that all that helpful i mean if you're looking at the very short term time frames yes that can be helpful because we actually do have something coming in right here which i believe was where did i make this where did i make this on it must have been like a 12 hour daily or something yeah it was a 12 hour it looks like yeah it was a 12 hour so if we do see a four hour total closure below uh let's call it 17 what is it, 1710? Yeah, about 1710. Then yes, I would look for that move to come all the way down. Uh, but for right now, I am still a bit hesitant here, to be fair. We do have, yeah, we do have bearish divergence all the way up to daily. So it is a little bit concerning. It is a little bit concerning, you could say. Jesus Christ, yeah, actually, actually plenty of things pointing down right here, to be fair. Let's see, what about the weekly? How did this one operate? Uh, yes, okay, there we go. All right, so a little bit of a backfill in last week open at around uh, 16, yeah, 6, 16, 15, we'll call it. Uh, rounding up a little bit there. Um, but I'd be looking for a bounce off that region as well. Uh, if that area does fail, then yeah, we can talk about we can talk about a, a much greater move to the downside. I think on the lower term time frames, that next horizontal was coming in right here. Yeah, that was like a uh, low 1500 bucks. So it is quite a big range right there as well. However, however, I do want to see what this looks like on this uh, trending chart over here. Let's see, do we did we meet the criteria from yesterday? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Um, again. I, I, I can't get bearish off this just yet. Uh, lower term time frames do suggest a little bit of downside. Medium term time frames uh, say the same thing as well, but higher term time frames still say trending in motion. Uh, let's see what a momentum monster to say right here. Nothing too problematic. Yes, the MACD histogram did back off a little bit there, but I still favor uh, I still favor the troll under bands there for tr for more media trend to begin with. Um, very very interesting what about our three day we closed that one last night as well yes indeed we yes 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 certainly we did um yeah this one a little more more potentially problematic there fair enough hmm could we see the changing of the market tides right here I, th I still think it's a little bit premature to say something like that. We are going to uh, we are going to bearish cross on the daily MACD, but that is not actionable in and of itself. It needs to break structure here, and that would again be below sixteen hundred. Yeah, so sixteen hundred both relevant for the daily and for I believe it was the four hour structure. Um, as long as Ethereum uh, uh, lives above there, I do still go in with the with a bullish bias. But man, that's uh, if 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 that one gets undone, a lot of this market's going to come down pretty damn heftily. And I'd be surprised if uh, if Ethereum comes all the way down to like. 1400 1300-ish region uh, if if that were to happen, if that were to happen. But we're getting ahead of ourselves right now. Uh, let's see what traditional marks are doing right now too, as that should give us a little bit of insight into the general market sphere. And what do you know? New all-time highs. Does that make me bullish or bearish on Bitcoin, which seems to be quite correlated with uh, specifically the tech sector in NASDAQ? 
Uh, well, yes, you already know. We did meet our two spot 6.8 target from, I mean, <laughs> that was like months ago, but just got hit off uh, at the end of last week, now getting exceeded right now. And we do see that the weekly is essentially continuation here. So I do ultimately look for this one to make new all-time highs this week. I, I mean, it's already made new all-time highs to be fair, but where the next target of region B, uh, well, I suppose kind of running out of uh, projected regions right here, what we could do well, um, could I look at this consolidation? It could, but I don't think it's going to work all that well. This one's obviously working, so I'm hesitant to uh, to kind of skirt around that. Um, but we could look. What we could do is we could populate a three spot extension on this one. Let's see. Well, I don't even have it in there to begin with. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, four one four. See what these guys say right there. So the three spot's going to be at fourteen uh, two fifty. The four one four is going to be at fourteen seven. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this would be the next short of medium term target right here at about fourteen two fifty two. And ultimately, though, the 6.8 and the 414 is where I'd, is where I'd be looking for on this rally uh, over time. You know, not today, not tomorrow, but over the next few months, uh, rather likely. Weekly still very much bullish. There's nothing bearish about something that's close on new time, on new all time highs on the weekly at all whatsoever. So I look at this, and uh, and that does make me a little bit more confident in um, in looking at Bitcoin. It's very likely to pull through here to the upside. Now, there was one major thing that actually got passed on on this morning that was some sort of like Finex tether fud once again. So they're playing up that narrative. Um, you know, I've seen this shit for the last like three, four years. And believe me, I'm not a fan of, of, uh, of Tether. I don't really know about Bitfinex, but Tether certainly I am not the, uh, I'll, I'll put it this way. I'd never, I'd never, I'd never want to own Tether, uh, uh, consciously, <laughs> I'll put it that way. Um, but at the end of the day, I've been hearing about this tether FUD and this tether. I fucking hate that word FUD too. But the tether, the tether debacle, the tether situation ever since 2016, 2017, right? And very little has come out of it thus far, even with even with major publications uh, talking about it, like the New York Times, um, like several media outlets uh, of the likes, um, but at the end of the day, nothing has actually come out of it, even with several, several uh, litigations by, you know, major U.S. entities like the New York Attorney General, like I think the SEC or the CFTC has an open investigation against them as well. So all of this is, you know, concerning, yes, but when do the chickens come home to roost? I don't fucking know. Uh, it can be a very long time. As the saying goes, the wheels of justice turn very slowly. Could it be an actual issue right now? Potentially, yes. You know, we're hearing about it once again. I think it was like an Italian publication. I'll have to double check on this actually. In fact, let's, uh, let's go over here. That'd make a really good, uh, that'd make a really good clickbait headline too. <laughs> let's see. I'm getting better at this clickbait headline shit. <laughs> what I typically do is, if you want to know my secret, how I've been, I've been learning it, <laughs> is I go into MM Crypto's uh, videos. I go into Chris's videos and I copy and paste his headlines sometimes. <laughs> and, and it works and it fucking works. So thanks for that, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, it's, a, it's an Italian newspaper. Let's see. I can actually bring it up right here. Let's see. Ah, fuck it. My Twitter's not logged in on this computer. God damn it. All right. Well, well, we'll maybe bring that back a little bit later. But yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's on Twitter there. I'll, maybe I'll retweet it a little bit later, and uh, you can check it out for yourself. Uh, but yeah, Nasdaq being be, uh, remaining in bullish posturing does make me think that Bitcoin very likely does uh, pick it up off the low side of the short term range. Same thing with spot futures as well, making new all time highs. We said last week uh, on closure was very likely. I'd be saying the same thing uh, on this week. Uh, you know, technically speaking, it's already at new all time highs. I would be looking for this to create even more new all time highs over the next uh, coming weeks. Um, next sort of uh, medium term target is going to be about 4022. And on top of that, I'd, I'd ultimately be looking for this one to actually travel past 4,000 bucks into about the 41 to 4200 ish region of which i do think that we could be coming into some major highs around there uh short-term time frames continuation yeah looking really really good here to be fair looking very very good here so again uh i do think that traditional markets lead bitcoin and in this case that very likely does mean that uh bitcoin you know while it does have a little bit of short-term dilemmas uh, i'd be looking for those to get picked up M, what else do we want to check out? Do we want to look at uh, some like link uh, shutter at the messages that I'll get when looking at this thing? Uh, again, I'm very, 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 very bullish on this one. Uh, I look at whatever whatever just happened uh, in the last like 12 hours since I last looked at it. I, I look at that as a major opportunity. Uh, any sort of buys in the mid 20s, uh, Jesus Christ, that is that is a fucking obvious trade of five for someone. Um, let's go see what it looks like on this chart over here. I imagine it's going to be even more impressive. Yes, indeed. 
<laughs> yeah that's that that's that's fucking it right there man that's fucking it and we haven't even seen the dmi plus take off here either uh, D, uh weekly macd though is going and that is relatively strong or that is not just relatively strong that is fucking strong trending above the top side trying to bounce at the same time that's picture perfect man just want to see the dmi plus uh follow suit now and i'd be targeting the next sort of set of moves to the upside do, do, do i have it on this chart right here no i don't it's on this chart over here i suspect yes indeed it is um, so we did hit our three spot extension target at about 38 bucks. Um, I, I don't, like, I, like I say, I very rarely see this one produce like legitimate reversals. I do, I do see it produce like short term, medium term reversals. I mean, we, we've, you've seen that right there. You see that right there, of course. Um, but ultimately, uh, this thing very, very likely to make it towards 40 bucks. And you know, then what's your next big psychological number? Just send it to fucking 50 bucks. How about that? How about that? Is that bullish enough for the crypto market? Are people going to give me views now? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't no no it actually doesn't matter it's uh, just, just something to joke around about but more importantly um you know i all jokes aside i wouldn't be bullish with this yes uh long term it is very very good uh theta what are we looking at right here very fucking good as well i'd be looking for this one to test around its prior all-time high and very likely make new all-time highs we just see a set of higher lows very 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 nice what about uni uh bad <laughs> very bad uh maybe not very bad but I would be looking for this one to try a bounce uh, somewhat soon. The question is, does that get sold into or not? Probably does, <laughs> probably does, but I don't think we have enough history to really go off, uh, go off of something like this. Um, what else we wanna check? Uh, Ethereum Bitcoin would be a good one to check out too. Ethereum Bitcoin, I do think that is getting ready for a bounce relatively soon here. Um, I'm very much split on this one. Uh, I'm very much split on this one. And I think I've done a very bad job of relating my ideas on this one as well. As I was having a conversation with someone last night in the Discord um, uh, who's saying Crown's very bullish on, on Ethereum Bitcoin, uh, but I don't see it. And I'm like, uh, I don't think I would say I'm very bullish on this. I do think that long term it probably is. Uh, short term, however, we do have bearish difference between this point and this point, but that move is slowly playing out. I do think it has another uh, short term downside move here towards uh, towards the 21 at about 3.3 million, but I ve but very likely does bounce at the same time. The question is, does that bounce fail or not? Here's here. Okay, so there's two very obvious things right now that make me both extremely bullish or extremely bearish on this one. I'll start off with the extremely bearish one first, and then we'll look at the Bitcoin dominance chart. I don't think it's that likely, but um, but it's, well, it's important to talk about. And that'd be the 200 X benchmark average right here, that purple moon average that you do see. If if Ethereum does start coming back down below there, and especially even just closing weekly totals below the 21 X benchmark average, this very likely does go for the full retrace. Once again, do I think that that's what's happening? No, I actually don't think that that's what's happening. Weekly RSI is not suggesting that. I mean, it does suggest a little bit of short-term downside, yes, but long-term it says that this is uh, this is this is turning the corner here. Um, by the same token, the 200 symbol to the upside is your, well, is your resistance for now. Uh, but keep in mind that that is above the range highs and there's nothing bearish about that overall. So technically speaking, I should be long-term bullishly biased on this one with the caveat of this pivot right here. However, uh, let's go see what the daily is actually looking like right now. Yeah, daily is going to try. It looks like, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think this one switches on to be embarrassed. Short, short term does have a little more downside though, but I do think that that gets picked up. Uh, again, about 3.3 million is kind of where we'd be looking towards. Um, yeah, four hour kind of slinking its way down too. Let's go check out what the Bitcoin dominance chart is looking like. Uh, as we do see that Bitcoin dominance was heading up on the last tick. Okay, lower term time frame is not all that useful here. Uh, daily, we do have major bullish divergence, but the easy portion of that move is already played out. What I usually like to see on these moves is I like to see three drives. And do we have three drives? Um, no, we don't have three drives. We have two drives right now. I wouldn't here, 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 here's what I'd be looking for to happen. I'd be looking for another kind of swipe of the lows and then like a, a triple reversal on that one. If you see another swipe of the lows and then a third drive of bullish divergence off the lows, that's going to be one of the most classic signals of big reversals. And this thing's going to pop back up towards, you know, 67 to 69 region and maybe beyond over time. Uh, weekly, not giving us much right here. Yeah, not really giving us much. I mean, it's still working off of lower highs, to be fair. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on the weekly, actually. Uh, basin area, obviously, right below, right at that 59.5% uh, region. Um, but short term, short short term probably does come back down again. The question is, does it set in? Does it set in that third drive, or does it just set in like a like a like a three drives reversal here? Anyways. Um, yeah, th this this one's actually definitely very much worth uh, worth paying attention to. I'm gonna put an alert right here, actually. 
I'd, I'd really, 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 really want to see that one in real time. Um, this is the first time that I've like really been interested in the Bitcoin dominance chart in a while too, because uh, if this does get going, that will that will be catastrophic. Now, on the other side, I can very easily create a bearish case for this, a fucking massively bearish case for this one, uh, in the sense that we do have a daily death cross inbound, uh, probably within the next two to three days, assuming that the dominance does not jump back above, let's call it 64 and a quarter percent. If that does not happen, then yes, it will get death crossed. Is it a picture perfect one? It's a pretty good one with that test right there is, is uh, would would, uh, would be considered. But um, again, this one's looking a little bit more ready for a reversal here than anything else. I'm sure people are calling this head and shoulders. It's not a head and shoulders actually. Uh, I also wouldn't really be looking at formations on a chart like this. Uh, do we see anything right here? No, nothing, nothing too obvious right now. Yeah, so very interesting, very, very interesting today. Yeah, today I feel like my analysis is not very helpful. Um, but to be quite honest with you, I mean, that's just the way that's going to be some days. Uh, I know that that's fucking annoying for the spoon boys out there, but hey, man, um, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at the same fucking charts as you. Uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to make up shit just for the sake of making up shit if I don't see shit in there. Um, what I'd call back to if you're a long term trader is the long term analysis playlist that I did over this weekend, a specific interest on the last one. I'm actually going to be adding a little bit to that. There's a few other things that I'd like to present. Uh, maybe I'll wait for the end of this week or, or, or like a little bit of a slower time because I, I do think that it's incredibly interesting um, as far as timing the next top. Uh, which is something that I very much run away from doing usually, but it is hard to ignore this one thing that I did find last night that is, well, it's just worked out perfectly in the past. So I do want to give it a little bit more looks uh, over this week and then probably over the weekend when things are a little bit slower, I'll, I'll go back over to that as well. Um, anyways, uh, let's, should we wrap this, should we wrap this bitch up? Actually, first off, let's look at caretaker ranges over here. Okay, four hour is getting, yeah, four hours actually getting the range right now, showing 45.5 to the downside versus 49.5 to the upside. I, I, it's, it's difficult for me to get bearish off this. It, 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 it really is at this point. It's neutral zone consolidation as far as four hours concerned. Historical volatility percentile is starting to expand from a very low region. Let's see what the hourly looks like. Uh, hourly is a little bit of a short-term uh, bearish trend, of course, but that 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 obviously makes sense. Um, what do we see the bottom side of this? Yeah, forty-five-five again. Yeah, I I, I like forty-five-five here, and technically speaking, we kind of already tested that region forty-five-seven twenty-six. So now I'm starting to now I'm starting to consider: Did we already test that region? And this is and this is and this is your accumulation right here. Could be, could be. Um, a healthy amount of I don't know today is actually a really good. This this this, this is going to be a great day for like a newcomer to this channel to check on in. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's fucking great. Um, but that's okay. Anyways, uh, looking at this right here, let's put on a, let's put on our ranges. I'm actually going to raise this up a bit, uh, mostly because, well, could we still use this one? We could still use this one, but fair enough. I think, I think it would just be a little more healthy to use the top side of our current range as it is. And what I would say for today is as, as we wrap this bitch up, I do want to make that very clear so that we can do a nice little Twitter video later. Let's get this going on over here. Here's what I put the most weight on. Here's what I put the most weight on um, as, as, and I do want to go into this saying that the lower term timeframes, I'm not super, uh, super gung ho about today. Uh, weekly did close above the top side Toronto band for the, well, for the first time in a while now after this little consolidation between the $40,000 and $30,000 level. So that to me does set in the bias of Bitcoin making new all time highs very likely this next week or two of price action. And we do see that momentum also are falling through with this as well. We do see that uh, weekly MACD is, is increasing on the histogram, especially as long as we're above 39,300, it looks like. And on top of that, we do see that uh, weekly DMI ADX is continuing with its strength in the ADX, which is good. Now I just want to see the DMI plus get a positive slope. If that happens, alongside all these other signals, which I look at this as more or less formality. This is very likely to make its way up to the next major uh, targets of which that would still be somewhere around about 58,000 to 62,000 bucks. That's around the two spot 618 Fibonacci extension. Also our pattern target coming out of this area right here and the three spot extension, uh, which I do typically get see, uh, sorry, I choose, I do typically see hit in more aggressive and violent markets, which this would certainly fit the criteria for. In the short term, however, things are a little bit different as we do see Bitcoin creating a bit of a range here. Year. bit of a fake out yesterday um or i don't even know if i'd call it a safe fake out i think what i consider it as is essentially a weekend bullshit move <laughs> for the most part you know breaking out of the top side of this range right here but yes that was something that yesterday uh, i would have been wrong about although i'd say that it is a little bit premature to be judging that right now seeing as bitcoin is going to try to put in a higher low right here now with all of that in mind it should be reflected upon going back to this chart right here that we already have seen the backfill i believe on the two day and the three day 
yeah, the two-day and the three-day right there coming back down and, and testing the last wick low. And then the daily already coming back down to test the nine of country average right here. So all of that in mind with each other, I do th still think that Bitcoin could maybe have another stint back down somewhere around the 55 exponential average on the four hour time frame. If you're looking at the lower term time frames, again, specific interest on the higher term time frames for the general buys. Now we're getting into the more experimental stuff down here. Cause I'm not too, uh, I'm not too, um, uh, confident, uh, today, uh, for that, for that reason. And I do want to be very, 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 very transparent when I feel that way, because I think it's important one as a trader to relate those, that idea. Cause not always going to be like, you know, full on, full on fucking, uh, full, you know, full mast here. Um, and sometimes, you know, things aren't just, just aren't as obvious, but as it stands right now, there actually are a lot of things in the lower term timeframes pointed southwards. We do have a dual sell signal on the four hour, and that actually is replicated on the CME time, uh, chart as well. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that. That's probably the most concerning thing to me, but extremely important. I do not look at this as actionable at all whatsoever until we get something tangible on price action. I really do not like, like taking these counter trend signals and where would that be? That would be below our last low at 44,400 or 300. Or I, I think it's more like 44,3. Yeah, 44,3 on a four hour closure. If you're using a buy hourly, I'd use 44,000 even. If we do see closures below that level, that's where that becomes actionable. That's we, that's where that becomes very diabolical. And that's where, where I start to look for, you know, another 4,000, maybe even $5,000 move to the downside to about $40,000, anywhere between about 30 and forty thousand dollars where i'd be looking towards which is you know <laughs> that's quite the move right there more than 10 percent move at this price point so keep that in mind but i again not actionable until this area does break bitcoin does have uh you know uh, admittedly a rather large short-term time frame range of about four thousand bucks between about uh, 48 and uh and 44 we'll call it um but i would essentially be having the bias set on the higher term time frames for further continuation try see upside towards new all-time highs with a short-term medium term or not short-term but medium Medium term target at around the 51,500 ish region right here. Also, the two spot extension, and then more long term over the next month or two up towards 58,000 to 62,000 bucks. Or anytime that I say next month or two, it usually happens within like the next fucking week, which is ridiculous. But my point is, is that uh, short term, I don't really have any strong biases. I, I do change below here, but I suppose I'm just generally bullish on top of that. Um, do we have any sort of hidden divergences building here? Yeah, we could. We could have some hidden divergences building here. However, Bitcoin does need to put in a, or does need to confirm a, a low right here and it has not done that just yet how would it, how would it confirm a low right here if we do see a closure back above the 10 simple on the four hour that'd be an obvious signal right there other than that i think it's a little bit too premature to call and if that does happen i would be looking for that move to populate itself to the 51,500 ish target um probably plays out of, uh, off a little bit of a short-term pullback from that region and then gives another try towards the more weekly targets of 58,000 to 62,000 dollars um uh, so with I, so with all that said, I think I did cover everything right there. Again, short term time frames, maybe a little bit of sideways and down. Higher term time frames, still more or less bullish, um, as long as forty four thousand dollars does hold essentially. So with that said, I do want to wish you the best, best. Take care, and until next time.